pay a bunch of mana to copy this thing a lot of times. Wow, it just keeps triggering. It is a capsize. Yep. So we're going to flicker form again, so at least it's not going to be like right now. Hey guys, there's two great ways to support the channel. All links are in the description below. Welcome back everyone, playing some Feather Radiant Arbiter today. And today's deck list comes to us from Patreon supporter Fi. Let's take a look at this opener. Oh, we got Sarah Sanctum in the opener. Might be keeping this. This one's got card draw. Redraws. Okay, it's a little dicey, but we're going to keep. Because Sarah Sanctum is insane. This card is horrendously expensive in paper. On Magic Online, it's like $4. So funny story, he sent me the deck and he's like, do you have a Sarah Sanctum? Because he was thinking about the paper price. And I'm like, honestly, I don't know. I play Enchantress so little that I don't even know if there's a Sarah Sanctum in my collection because I just couldn't remember if I ever picked one up. And uh, turns out I did have one. And here we are piloting a Feather Radiant Arbiter Enchantress or a Mancer list, uh, which looks very interesting. I don't really know what to make of this yet. Uh, hopefully it's going to be cool and do fun things, but yeah, I don't know. So I, the first time I read Feather, I was like, what do you do with this ability? I guess we should read Feather, by the way. Three mana for a 4-3 with flying and lifelink. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell that targets only Feather, you may choose any number of other creatures that spell could target and pay two for each of those creatures. If you do, for each of those creatures, copy the spell. The copy targets the creature. So yeah, when I read that the first time, I'm like, what do you do with that? Because it's sort of like a less good version of the original Feather. At least in the sense that original Feather's ability is free, and this one costs you mana. Which means it's not like a Zada deck, where you just make a bunch of tokens and then copy an effect a million times. So, you know, I was left with this question of, what do you do with this? And apparently the answer is you build an Oromancer deck. Uh, we do draw a Sigarda's Aid, which is actually fantastic. Uh... That one comes in tap. I do think we want that one. Unless you control a legendary creature. Yeah, we'll just get the uh, multicolor one right here. But, yeah, I'm excited to try this list out. Another thing, too, is that when I looked at it upon first glance, I'm like, there's no card draw in this deck. This is going to be a problem. But then I realized there's a bunch of these angelic gift redraw type auras in the deck. And if you're copying those, that's card draw. It's maybe not like the most mana efficient card draw ever, but it's okay. Esper Sentinel for opponent. Yeah, that's a good one. Still need to get these lands. Keep putting that off. Soul Ring into the Esper Sentinel. Not great. Unquestioned Authority. Commander Classic right there. Uh, let's play this mountain. Get this Sigarda's Aid. Uh, we can pay for the Esper Sentinel. Let's take a peek at the deck list. So here's the list. Pretty low mana curve. Uh, we do see a lot of Oromancer type stuff. Like Light Paws, Sigarda's Aid, Ethereal Armor. A lot of classics there. There were about five or so cards that weren't available on Magic Online, some newer ones. Uh, there was a cool one up here. I forgot what it was called. But it's like a five-mana aura that returns all other auras. Uh, it was out of one of the, it looked like, I think it was one of the Kamigawa commander sets. So I filled in a couple of the deck slots. I added a Brilliant Restoration. Just seems good. Um, also added Replenish for the same reason. Oh, one thing we should talk about. So he does have, oh, God, I need to remember how this works. So there's Skybind. There's a combo with Skybind, and I need to remember what it is, because Fi has gotten me with it a number of times, and generally, it's upsetting to me every time that I lose to it. So we'll be trying to keep an eye out for that as the game rolls on here, but... But otherwise, just a lot of classic auras that you would expect in this style of deck. We see Dragon Mantle, a lot of the redraw ones. Twinning Staff does seem very interesting in this deck also. So yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting little build. We'll see how it plays. Uh, opponent got themselves a Nature's Lower while we were chatting. Invasion of Gobacon, who's it going to target? Oh, that's d and they're going to target seven deadly sins. Uh, and with that, that brings it back to our turn. There's a Plains. Plains does make our life better, I think. I guess we can just throw the Sarah Sanctum down there. Yeah, let's just do that. Case of a wheel. Cast Feather. And with that, we'll pass the turn. Let's take a look at what our opponents are playing today. First up is Vermilion Nintendo piloting Tenib the Harvester. He was uh, in Discord the other day. He's like, hey, I want to build a green-black X commander. I'm like, build Tenib the Harvester. Uh, and I'm surprised because he actually did it. <laughs> so I've built Tenib in paper three separate times. <laughs> it's never as good as you want it to be, but I just love him as a card. I don't know why. <laughs> 
Uh, he said it's going to be a sort of controlling reanimator y Abzan deck, which is definitely what you'd expect, and that's definitely what I did when I played it. <laughs> I want to revisit this Dragon Cycle. I've always wanted to play all of them. Never really got around to it. It was one of those things I meant to do like six years ago and just, you know, never really bubbled to the top of the to-do list. I did play that uh, Scion of the Ur-Dragon deck, though, that used only Planar Chaos and Invasion Dragons with those effects, and that deck was a ton of fun. And I have thought about building that deck in paper a few times. Uh, I just, I'm not really playing a lot in paper right now, but if I ever get back to playing in paper, I do want to put that deck together. It turns it into a fun toolbox of like, okay, which one is best for my situation right now? And... <laughs> turn him into that one that's a dockside extortionist at least it's now i mean it'll probably come back later if it doesn't get exiled but uh at least it's now and not later but that's still what four treasures yeah that's a lot that is a lot and a hainware garrison okay it's a good card but it's not the most threatening thing they could have laid down with all that extra mana so i'll take that they're still holding up three though brings it back to our turn there's a flicker form that's a spicy one uh let's play this minas tirith it does come in untapped. I do think we need to get some redraw going. Uh, I guess we go unquestioned authority because it, like, actually does something. Yeah, we'll just target Feather with it. Uh, does trigger the Esper Sentinel. Do I want them to draw a card? Uh, they can have the card draw because we can cast the Flicker form, though I do wonder if we should wait on that. Uh, we're not going to copy. There's the draw effect. We draw Great Desert Prospector. So 5-mana 3-2 enters the battlefield, create a tapped Power Stone token for each other creature you control. Hmm. Don't really understand why that one's in the deck, to be completely honest. It is a creature, though. I think we'll just sit on leave, just in case. It's a little early, but just in case removal starts flying. Because we have this thing, I think it makes sense to leave Feather back as a blocker, even though we could poke for 4 and gain 4 and do all that stuff. In theory, D Manny would try to swing into this and get this flipped over because the backside of this thing's pretty good. At the beginning of your end step, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature that attacked this turn. And you can sacrifice it to give him indestructible. Yep. He's uh definitely cheesed that with crack it and then cast a blasphemous act in the past. So, you know, if we can make it like a little bit more difficult for him to uh get this flipped over, that's probably gonna be a good idea. And also I'd prefer to not just like take a bunch of damage kinda out in the open, although Nate's not really an attacker, to be honest. I mean, this is, like, one of the greatest defensive creatures ever. Skull Prophet, mill two cards? Yeah, seems solid for that deck. The reason I don't want to cast the Flicker form, because if opponents are uh, paying close attention, they might realize that, like, that kind of combos a little bit and at least gets us a bunch of card draw. And uh, I we wouldn't have any mana left to leave up protection or interaction, so I do want to keep that protected and not just, like, run that into oblivion. Because we don't have, like... The, these two auras are going to be our card draw for a while. We don't have, like, a lot else going on at the moment, so we do need to be very careful with that. Nate sadly holding up mana, which is never great. Muddle the mixture. Gross. Continuing on our opponents, by the way. Seven Deadly Sins piloting Tameshi Reality Architect out of last year's Kamigawa set. Whenever one or more non-creature permanents are returned to hand, draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn. That's interesting. Walking Atlas. Love me some Walking Atlas. Pay X and 1, return a land you control to its owner's hand, return target artifact or enchantment card with mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, activate only as a sorcery. So draw a lot of cards and play enchantments? Or artifacts, I guess. Looks like they might be doing the artifact thing. <laughs> Muddle the mixture for a walking atlas. Love to see that. Seven Deadly says, I want ramp. They must have a lot of lands in hand if they're doing that, or plan to draw a lot more cards. Underrated card right here. You're not going to play it everywhere, but in some decks, decks that can draw a lot and can't get the lands out of their hand, it's good for those decks. Uh, OG Feather is actually really good with Walking Atlas. I do need to jam this into my Tap Creature Tribal deck. Uh, that deck actually does have trouble getting lands out of hand. But there's like a million mana dorks for that deck, and it is hard to justify this over the many, many mana dorks that exist. But uh, you want to think about, if D-Manny just casts Iroas right here, then like, yeah, we don't have so much blocking. Yeah, I didn't think about that. That's probably what's about to happen. Ooh, it's a sort of hearth and home. Well, that'll get past our thing. Although, they can't attack the battle and still get the trigger. Let's see if Nate wants to respond to that, because sort of hearth and home is a very strong card. Quips the sword? Yep. Where's it going? Yep, us, of course. Yep, and the one ones. Good news is, choose any player. 
Yeah, they sent them both to seven deadly because anywhere else those one ones would get eaten. Can't do much about this. I guess we crack back since Iroas and the sword are going to make blocking basically impossible. Sword trigger. Oh no, blink the dock side. Ugh. That's disgusting. This should removal check the table in the next turn. This can't stay out there. Seven treasures. I think they made six. I think they won left over. Down to three cards, but they're at a point now where casting Iroas is bad. Wow. Vanquish the Horde already. That's interesting. Why would he... He must have reanimation. There's no way he would cast a Vanquish right there without reanimation. Because no one else really had anything, like, super worthwhile. Nate draws a card. Season Pyromancer. It's down to one card, thankfully. Oh, no. He's going to draw back up, though. Up to two cards. Discards a Hero of Blade Hold. I do wonder if that last card's got to be reanimation of some kind. Just doesn't seem like it would make any sense without it. Because he was way ahead and just ready to keep the train rolling. Uh, Signet is okay. Play that. What's our commander? Five now? Yep, that only makes one. I guess we just recast our commander. Do want to get that Signet down, but... Did we have two mana up last turn? Could I have cast leave? Someone check the tape on that. Did I fall asleep at the wheel on that? I think I did. I mean, I guess it's our commander in one aura. We lose tempo. But tempo is an important thing. Here comes Tenet. <laughs> So, if you're playing a Tedim deck, the thing you want to see is someone else casting a board wipe, because you do need to slow the game down to your speed. Uh, but now that it's out there, a 6-6 six, six flyer is, like, bigger than most things that exist in Commander without, like, synergies and stuff pumping each other up, right? Oh, now Nate's probably going to grab the Dock Side. So here's my prediction. Nate swings somewhere, gets this trigger, brings back Dock Side Extortionist, then makes a bunch of mana, starts to take over the game. This play pattern is extremely similar to how you handle a Primeval Titan. Once a Primeval Titan happens, it's the only thing that matters in the game. Uh, Sigarda's Aid goes down to a Crushed Contraband that's exiled. I mean, it does show, it slows down our mana, which isn't great. That was a real nice to have. Like, it's, you know, it's not like the deck's gonna fall apart without it, but that's a real nice one to have. Does get rid of the sword, which needs to happen because we're just in trouble. That sword sticks, but... So here's what would happen. If the sword doesn't get exiled, Nate gets the dockside. D-Manny hits someone with the sword, blinks the dockside, gets it back, right? And just the whole game is just dockside extortionist. And I'm not really here for that, to be completely honest. Uh, Brass Tunnel Grinder. And just battlefield discard any number of cards and draw that many plus one. Discards a Mingara. That's card draw, which is suspect given that they are low on cards. Iroas coming into play. Great, they have Menace, can't block. Yep, this thing will flip over. Love it. And we got the Light Shield Array. Yep. Back to our turn. Umbra Mystic. Auras attached to permanents you control have totem armor. That's a cool one. Um, Play the planes. Let's get the Talisman. Uh, we'll get the Angelic Gift to redraw. Also puts mana back into Sarah's Sanctum, which is important. Oh, wait. If we copied... If we copied Angelic Gift and put it on Tenib, does that mean we draw the card? Oh, I think we would have drawn the card. Whoops. Uh, Volocode Exploration is one that I added because I thought this deck didn't have enough card draw in it. So that is a thing. Uh, we'll wait on that because we don't have a land lined up yet. But let's get this Umbra Mystic in just to get a creature going. And it will protect our enchantment from destroy effects. Destroy effects. Then next turn, maybe we look at this guy, maybe. Again, I don't really know what its purpose is. I don't think there's not like tons and tons of artifacts in this deck. Yeah, there's very few artifacts in this deck. I don't know if it's part of a combo or something. It must be, right? Swing into D-Manny. D-Manny takes a hit for four. Nate's going to swing over to D-Manny with the Tenib. Yeah, D-Manny's doing all kinds of stuff over there. Tenib trigger. D-Manny down to 29. So we had a little gentleman's agreement that Nate wouldn't go for the Dockside Extortionist because he would probably just win the game if he did because it does ruin games. And we wouldn't really get to see the decks. So, ooh, Skull Clamp with Hero Bladehold. That's a spicy one. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, Dockside Extortionist, idyllic tutor for Nate. Let's see what he's going to get. Ristic Study. Yep, for seven deadly. Our final opponent, by the way, is D-Manny piloting his Iroas deck. We've seen this one many times on the channel. It's like a lot of humans, a lot of human synergy in there, and uh, Boros, good stuff, aggro, with a solid amount of reanimation. Things tend to come back in that deck. Showdown of the Scalds. Into the Ristic Study. Notable thing about Volokut Exploration from other Impulse Draw is that it actually puts the thing in the graveyard. So if you do have some amount of reanimation, uh, the fact that it doesn't completely exile the thing, it can be very helpful. And I do need to explore this more. I do want to put it in the Angel deck because there's a lot of reanimation in there for the same reason. And that deck could use more like incremental card draw. There's a lot of wheels in it, but 
you don't always want to wheel at every point in the game. Let's see what he hit with Showdown. Adeline and three lands. Okay. Gets a land. Adeline is pretty disgusting, though. <laughs> there is that. Sword of the Animist into the Ristic Study. Sword of the Animist on the Iroas. Iroas into seven deadly. Brings it back to our turn. There's a land. That'll be good for triggering the Volokut exploration here. We paying for this Ristic Study? Uh... So I'm talking to Fi in chat whose deck this is, and he says that the Power Stones can be used to pay for abilities, uh, which sounds pretty interesting. So we'll have two enchantments in play. Uh, I'm going to pay for this Rhystic Study, because I think we can still do everything we want to do. Paying for the Rhystic Study. Play the land. Get a Volokut trigger. What did we hit? Uh, Boros Charm. It's not, it's not what I was really looking for right there. Then I guess we play this Prospector guy. Can't pay for the study on this one. Great Desert Prospector, ETB. Where is it? Each other creature? Each other creature. So we get two Power Stones. Could be more. Could be more. This is an interesting card, though. I got to think about where I would play this. Because I definitely have places that I would play it. But I do need to figure out what those are. Man, this is about to be a lot of aggro on this board with Hero of Blade Hold. And, you know, D-Man, he's normal. Par for course on his deck. So I'd really love to have a blocker up. But I think we just got to attack. Plus, we have the lifelink, so, you know. Now, if Tedum just comes over here, that's not going to feel great. But I don't know that we're very threatening in this moment. And end step, we'll send Boros Charm to the graveyard and do one damage to each opponent. So next turn, the goal is to try to get Flicker Form on Feather and then start flickering to maybe draw some cards. It'd be bad if another board wipe went off. Yep, Ten of Barway. Thought that might happen. Hero into seven deadly. Battle Cry and tokens. Oh, I got to remember this ability. Uh, we might be able to draw some cards with that, too, because we need cards in this moment. Now, d is down to one card. If he catches a wheel, he'll almost definitely cast it. So that could help us, too, but I would like to get Flicker Form out before that happens. Yep, no blocks. Ten of Trigger. Getting Mangara. Yep, all the value. One thing we have to be careful of, since the beginning of time, I've talked about how good Homeward Path is. Uh, if d or someone drops a Homeward Path, d is going to get a lot of value. Ooh. Journey to Eternity on this token, and then I'm sure he's about to Skull Clamp it. Pays for the study. All seems real good. Probably get back the Solemn. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, no, it brings back what? The token that's creature? Yeah, okay, so it won't bring back the token, which is fine, but this is still a really powerful card. Skull Clamp on the token. Yep. Flip the Journey to Eternity. Draw two cards. Oh, you know what's interesting? So we could go leave to pick up Angelic Gift. And then recast Angelic Gift to draw a bunch? That's not a bad idea. Because then that puts multiple copies of Angelic Gift in, which is really good for a Sarah Sanctum. It does... That does get rid of our protection, though. Uh, like, I don't think we'll have enough mana to... F maybe. Would we have enough mana to flicker form? Probably not all in one turn. Could always, like, wait to an end step to leave. Which may not be the worst idea. Skull Clamp on Tenip. Yep. <laughs> Nate just rolling with that Tenip deck over there. I swear it never goes this good when I play it. Although... The ones I played were, like, much older, and things are just a lot more consistent in Commander now. I really want to build an Oros deck. I also want to build Vorosh. I saw a really cool plus one, plus one counters deck with Vorosh many, many years ago. And I always wanted to, like, recreate that and just never have, but it looked cool. The problem now is that, like, the plus one, plus one counter cards are so good that, like, Vorosh is probably an afterthought. Unless, like, a million board wipes go off kind of thing. Propaganda, no. Party foul. Academy Rector. Well, let's find out what their deck is all about. Uh, notably, the tokens from this get around the propaganda. Goes for the War Room off the Showdown. Imperial Recruiter. Showdown Trigger. Put a counter on something. Ristic Study. They grabbed Blade Historian. That gets you killed really quickly. Here comes the Blade Historian. Pumps up another thing. Ristic Study. Uh, and this protects them from a board wipe. So it's got to be something that gets around indestructible. The other option is we all just try to gang up on him. That is a lethal Iroas swing to anyone who can't block. It would make sense, yeah, to try and kill Nate right here because Nate can put the most hurting back on D-Manny and probably has a handful of removal. Uh, opponent messes up into the propaganda, which I actually don't care for because we weren't going to get hit that bad and that may, that, yeah, they're probably going to rethink their attacks now. Yep, uh, our situation is now very dire. Nate's going to die. We're going to take a big hit. Shot for 10. We need a really big draw. Austere Command. Mm, what does Austere Command do it? Enchantments go before creatures. Uh, I guess they, they sack it in response, right? That doesn't help us. Nate goes down to commander damage. Yep. Uh, D-Manny stuff gets exiled. 
thankfully. At least the Hero Blade Hold does. Light Array continues to trigger. We draw a Starnheim Courser. It's not exactly what I was hoping on. Well, let's start... I mean, yeah, like, we... You can't block into Iroas, so... Let's start by just attacking and trying to draw a card. They're gonna block one. That's fine. Yeah, they're probably trying to put it in the graveyard. Let's try to use this Power Stone and this activated ability. Ah, I guess you can. So we use the Power Stone to pay for one of the, uh... Minas Tirith. What does this one do? Draws cards. It's not the worst thing, but... It's gonna be tricky here. So put this on Feather. We get a Feather... I mean, is there Teferis in this deck? There's a Prison Term in the deck. There's no Teferis. That's not good. Prison Term, though, could uh, solve some problems. Uh, we're going to force Seven Deadly to draw because we want them to find removal. So Feather Trigger. Be four mana to copy it. Yeah, I guess we pay four mana right here. And just pray. Paying four. Get two additional copies of Chosen by Heliod. There's a land. Land can re-trigger Volicode Exploration, so that's one more card we can look at. Plus a little bit more mana. And we can filter colors if needed. It's a solid pickup. But we do need something that's going to keep us alive, which we have not yet found. It's another land. Didn't need a second land. Unless we find a way to survive a turn. And we draw one more card. So finally getting to see what the deck does a little bit. But, I mean, this is all just... Nykthos is interesting. Nykthos is a very interesting land. Okay, keep this turn going. Uh, play the Nykthos. Mm. Yeah, play the Nykthos. Volokut Exploration. What did we get? Uh, unfinished business. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, then return up to two target auras or equipments from your graveyard to the battlefield attached. Yeah, that's not going to do much for us. That taps for five mana. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Huh. Uh, we have eight devotion to white. Uh, seven deadly said he's got a little bit of removal, so I guess we, uh, Pray that they can do something about demanding. So the problem is I, I want to leave up leave. Because if it's a board wipe, then... Well, it could exploration trigger. Then uh, we want to have mana for that. We don't really otherwise. Starts with a Nexus of Fate. Fantastic. I'm going to send this thing into us. Yeah, I mean, we might as well. Hopefully it doesn't get us killed. Also, I want to keep my life as high as I can. Problem is he, he can still just send Iroas over to us. Academy Rector. How bad's it going to be? Getting... Kiora Best of the Sea God. Make an 8-8 with Hexproof. Okay. I like that. I'm in for that. Ooh. Tap all non-land permanents target player controls. They don't untap during their controller's next untap step. I like that. Because they should take an extra turn right here that taps down d -Manny. Mystical Tutor on the upkeep. Great. Someone was talking about Capsize, which is not a card that I'd love to see. They don't have tons of mana yet, but what'd they get? Oh, Nexus of Fate. Of course. Of course. Nexus of Fate. Yep. No love for that magic card. 8-8 eight, eight, over to D-Man. He's just going to kill him with an 8-8. Eight, eight. <laughs> that would be hilarious. d Manny down to 9. Oh, it's only an 8-8. Eight, eight. <laughs> Opponent's going to gain control of our guy. Oh, they're going to gain control of our feather. That increases the damage. In fact, 7 Deadly now has lethal damage. <laughs> I do hope we get the... Oh, is that permanent? Tell me that's permanent. Uh, you own. Okay, so we can bring that leave. Yeah, we can leave this when the time becomes necessary to do so. Uh, Jenga Taxes. Oh, no. So if we wanted to leave, we'd have to do it right now before this thing resolves. Oh, this doesn't have haste. Uh, so yeah, we should probably just do that then. Turn Feather, Chosen by Heliod, Angelic Gift. Is there anything else we want to return? Could return this... I don't think that's worth the five mana. Yeah, I think just these. What is this counter? Artifacts, instants, and sorceries. Doesn't hit creatures or uh, enchantments, which is good. Really, they're going to swan song that? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Yeah, I guess we're paying for the study. Ah, uh, we can still hit it with the flicker form on our turn and just do it that way. So I guess we baited out the swan song. Jenga Taxus is down in, though, and that's a real problem. Uh, now we need them both to kill each other. 8-8 eight, eight over D-Manny. He's going to put it down to 1. Ooh, propaganda's going to be a nightmare for us. D-Manny down to 1. But we have more problems over here now. The blue deck is doing blue things. Uh, if he dropped an Aurelia, Aurelia would untap everything. I've gotten out of that bind before with Aurelia. Showdown of the Skulls. Final mode. Get sacrificed. Ortheon. Cool card, but doesn't look like it's going to do much for them in this moment. D-Manny's out of cards, has a 
War Room has a fetch that he can't crack. There's another land. Didn't need that. Good chance, but we probably need to get rid of Jenga Taxes before that happens. Let's play the Rugged Prairie. See what we pick up. Oh, funny story. We don't even have to attack d -Man. We could just let the egg. We could let this thing kill him. Ah, another land. Gross. Found the pocket of lands. Double check this wording. Artifacts, instants, and sorceries. Yep, so we're going to flicker form on our feather. Pay for that Ristic study. Crap, I should have cast this thing first. Uh, let's just flicker this now. Get it out of the way. Uh, we want to send Feather to Command Zone. We do not. Three mana currently off the Starnheim Courser. I think it's going to be a pretty brutal battle from here on out. Let's get the Starnheim Courser. We will pay for the Ristic Study. If we attack with two, we could draw another card, which does seem like a thing that we need to be doing. Although when Feather comes back, we draw, what, two cards, I think? We'll draw two cards off of that. The question is, is it worth losing something into this? Oh, we don't have enough to... Yeah, we ran out of lands. Okay. So we'll just send the 2-2 two -two for now. And we'll pay the two. They go down to 14. We'll go to our end step. Feather will return with all auras attached to it. And Volokut Exploration will trigger. Uh, so here comes the auras. We draw two cards. There's a Blasphemous Act. And Volokut Exploration should kill D-Manny. We draw another land. Wow, the pocket of lands. Ouch. D-Manny goes down. And let's see how bad it's going to be with seven deadly. They've got that Jenga Taxus. This thing gets out of hand quickly. But if they can't just, like, dismantle us or combo off, we do have just, like, a decent amount of flying damage. See how bad it's going to get? Oh, God, that's a lot of mana. Mass manipulate. What? Really? Cool. I still think we can flicker form, which is good. But So they take all of our flyers. It's unfortunate. Uh, they're going to come in with these two. Um, I do think that it is Blasphemous Act time, especially because they're tapped out. So Flicker Form will only get... Yeah, Flicker Form will get us Feather back. Uh, and then I think we just Blasphemous Act everything else. So that being the case, we block the bigger one right here. Try to keep our life total healthy. Because they're at 13, and with like all these lands that we keep hitting with Volokut Exploration, it's chip damage even if we're not attacking. Got an interesting game now. Brings it back to our turn. Ooh, Battle Mastery. Uh, start by playing the land. It's another land. <laughs> get that one point of damage in. My god. Yeah, I mean, I guess we have to give up the chance to Blasphemous Act. And then just try to get there. Yeah, because we'll draw cards with Feather. Okay. Yep. Oh. Well. Uh, cast Leave. Bristic Study and Jenga Taxus. How much mana is this making? It's making five. Yeah, we'll just use this. Pay for the Ristic Study. Cast Blasphemous Act, Holding Priority. Ristic Study. Flicker the Flicker Form. No on the command zone. Pay for the Ristic Study. Uh, this thing survives, but that's not the end of the world. We got rid of the flyers, which is important. We don't really have a lot else to do. We keep hitting lands with this stupid thing. I mean, it's good because it's getting us through the lands to other cards, but... Man, one, like, one card? Like, a creature. Any creature right here would be solid. Uh, Volokut Exploration and Feather. We draw some cards. Another land. Oh my god. Another land. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. In some sense, I kind of wanted that chance, because would love to ditch these lands right now. Oh, we can Blink Feather again, though, which uh, I think we might do, because, yeah, if we keep doing that, we keep drawing cards. We have one, two, three, four, five Devotion to White. Yeah, that's plenty. Seven Deadly had a well played on the uh, play we made last turn. We do have to be careful if they do have Capsize, though. If we have enough mana, we can activate it multiple times while it's on the stack. Okay. So we'll want to make sure we have the mana to be doing that. Still no flying blocking. Uh, I don't want to get caught out by capsize or something equally nasty. So as much as I really want to blink right here to get the draw, uh, I'm going to wait. Pray we draw something cool instead of more lands. Shiny Impetus. <laughs> enchanted Creature is goaded. I don't know if that's going to help us a lot. Uh, whenever Enchanted Creature attacks, you create a treasure token. Eh. Probably not as interesting as the double strike one. Although, both of them together is like nearly lethal, isn't it? Okay, that's something. Play the mountain. Volokut exploration. Light pause, you say. Uh, when it enters the battlefield under your control, if you cast it, you may search a library for an aura card with mana value less than or equal to that aura and with a different name than each aura you control. Put it on the battlefield attached to light pause. Uh, yeah, let's try that and see what that gets us. I don't fully understand that ability. I'm not sure I understood what I just read. I know this one's been around for a little while. Yeah, we're going to pay for that Ristic Study. Got to keep them from having cards. Wait. 
Oh, whenever an aura enters the battlefield. Okay. So then we cast an aura. Another heuristic study. Pay for the heuristic study. Do we need to copy this? I mean, I do want to leave that mana up, but if we copy it, yeah, it's basically only one mana to copy it because of uh, Sarah Sanctum. I uh, have mana neutral if we use Nykthos. Okay, we should copy it then. Use the ability. What can we get? Enchanted creature. When this creature attacks, it deals X damage to a defending player or X to the number of cards in their hand. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen. Curse of Opulence. Darks, is anything worth Darkseal mutationing? Their commander, maybe? Although it has... Does it have to be attached to light paws? Uh, sticky fingers, menace, deals combat damage, dies, draw a card. Rune of speed draws a card. Chant permanent. Gets 1-0 in haste. That's not awful. Prison term is super annoying. That stops activated abilities, doesn't it? Oh, it does, doesn't it? Oh, I really... I should use prison term more than I do. <laughs> Pentrarch ward is cool. I think we're going for rune of speed. I'm liking what the haste says right here. Uh, we draw a card. The Filer of Faith is interesting. Oh, is that another aura? That's another aura. Hmm. Use the ability. Okay. Okay, me likey, me likey. So, oh, they can't respond. So if we go Pentrarch Ward on blue, that should be really good right here. Yeah, let's get Pentrarch Ward on blue. On blue. So that'll shut off, like, spot removal against the light paws. We draw a card. <laughs> is this working? <laughs> is this actually working? They still have the white blocker on the ground, which is unfortunate, but... Uh, that's a sack outlet. I don't think we need that in the moment. How much mana is this? Eight. Eight's pretty good. How much mana? The problem is we need to use a bunch of mana to uh, pay for the uh, propaganda. So, I mean, if they don't have anything, then... Oh, this is interesting. So, crap. It's too late. Uh, they're gonna draw right here. I'm gonna pay a bunch of mana to copy this thing a lot of times. Bunch of copies of Shiny Impetus. Crap, I messed our mana up. That's not good. Use the ability. Let's see if we can get out of it with uh, something in here. I'm going to get the curse. Crap. Yeah, I should have used Nick those first. Uh, unquenchable Fury, Sticky Fingers. I'm going to get Prison Term as a safety thing here. Since we can't really attack anyway. Use the ability. Let's get Unquenchable Fury. Wow, it just keeps triggering. It just keeps triggering. Enters the battlefield, discover three. Yeah, let's get that one. See if that can uh, solve some of our issues here. Uh, Volokut Exploration is an amazing card. Let's cast the Volokut. Or Volokut Awakening, rather. Into the Rhystic Study. Can't pay. Ditch these lands. Um, okay, those are magic cards. Do this, and since we, since I messed up and we can't attack, which I hate myself for in this moment, uh, we're going to Flicker Form Feather. See what opponent was holding up. It is a Capsize. Yep, yep. Uh, they're probably going to get us with it this turn, though. So we're going to flicker form again, so at least it's not going to be, like, right now. Do it in response, like a professional. No on the command zone. So nothing else, at least we draw a million cards. And that's cool. Yeah, I messed up with the mana for the stupid propaganda. We'd have game without propaganda. Uh, I will say that this deck is very removal light. Have not seen a lot in the way of removal. Uh, we've got three mana floating. Yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, so we'll draw two more cards off of this. Ooh, they didn't buy back the cap size. Oh, that's good. Sajiri Shelter. Wish we had mana up for that. And a land. I feel like this is just overall better than Boonweaver Giant. Oh, you can search your library, though. Mm, that's a thing. I don't feel like we need a sack out. I mean, we do have the reanimation. We have this thing, which is cool. I guess we just ditch the land. Yeah, I definitely should not have cast the Shiny Impetus. 100%. See what opponents got. This is already a much better game than I was expecting to get. Uh, in the early going there, it was looking very scary. D-Manny was out of control, Dockside Extortionist all over the place. Nate was surprisingly quiet during this game. Nate usually makes a lot of big plays. Uh, they were playing a more chill deck. Drift to Phantasms, Transmute. Oh, I'm sure I'm not going to like that. Oh, there's a Flicker Form on here too? Nice. Oh no, that's our, that's our commander. I really want to get something with this prison term. <laughs> I'm hoping opponent didn't see it in the mess of stuff that went off last turn. What they get? Uh, intuition is probably not great for us. Casting intuition. Yep. Disgusting. Cryptic command. All right, which one goes where? Put that card in your hand, the rest in your graveyard. Let's give them the bounce. The other two look nasty. What's this thing do? Turn a land you control your owner's hand. Return target artifact or enchantment card with mana value X. Yeah, okay. Give them the seal. Cast the seal. 
Mystic Remora. Oh. Casting spells. Not where we want to be. Opponent has to attack. Nice. Nice. And we make... Ooh, we make treasures. That's, that's why I made the sequence of plays that I made. It wasn't correct to do so. And so once we get the second treasure, treasure, Sajiri Shelter is now up for the seal. And I'm feeling real good about that. So let's get this commander killed. Because that's the thing that I'm worried about. Um, and let's get this... Can we not block this one? Oh, prison terms on it. Right. Okay. Yeah, let's get their commander killed because... I'm not really interested in finding out what it's there to do. Yep, they're going to try to bounce Feather, as one would ex... Oh no, I have sixth! Oh no. Oh, that's unfortunate. It's okay, I think we're going to be okay. Uh, Somewhere on here there's Haste, pretty sure. Yeah, that one's got Haste, so if we go Feather and Odric, we'll be fine. Actually, maybe this is the time. Search your library for an aura. Yeah, okay. Ignite the future. Okay. How much mana does this make? Ten. Ten's pretty good. We have a Kellen, any equipment? Mask of Memory I added, there's a Dowsing Dagger, I think that's about it. Oh, Kellen cares about auras, doesn't it? Oh, it does care about auras. Okay, okay, noted. I think it also searches for auras. Okay, yeah, no, we have a, we have a very clear game plan here. Cast Feather, Ristic Study, yeah, we're gonna pay for those. Using the Power Stone. These Power Stones have been better than I thought. Did not realize you could pay for abilities with them. I don't like that that creature was five mana. If it was four mana, it'd be fantastic. Five is steep. Notably, this is also a creature. Cast the Odric. You know, it's, it'll be two, six, eight, two floating. Okay, that makes more sense. Okay, we'll use the Nykthos right here. Get Odric, pay for the study. Get Kellen. Do we need to search for anything? I don't think we need to search for anything. I mean, three with double strike, three with double strike. We never got rid of that prison term. That is a thing. Let's cast the Kellen just in case. In case we need more damage. Ristic study again. Pay for the study. Well, this has double strike also. Perfect. Go to combat. This should hopefully do it. Odric trigger. Send them. So we have double strike, haste, trample, flying, and lifelink. That's a great set of keywords. Use the Sarah Sanctum. Uh, just let the rest of that mana go. Oh, you know what we can do? We can draw a card with the floating mana. Nope, oh, missed it. Lethal? Lethal! Oh my god. Nice. Nice. So uh, the reason this worked out is because opponents killed each other. Uh, they were all doing very, very strong things, and we were not at that point in time. I would say even now, like, for turn 13, this is okay, but it's not exactly where I'd like to be. Granted, I misplayed in there. Feather should have been in there. Eh. I mean, it's okay. It's very resilient, and you have a lot of effects, which is all cool. But, uh, you know, there's definitely there's definitely some weaknesses here. There's definitely some weaknesses. Let's check on this removal count real quick. Uh, this appears to be the removal. Looks like four cards. Yeah, that's, uh, probably not gonna get it done. We nearly- oh, five with a wear tear. Uh, yeah, we nearly died to the Iroas, so... Uh, you're gonna want a little bit more removal than that. Um, I would say... Ignite the Future's in here, I'd probably also add Showdown of the Scalds, because that unconditional card draw, uh, before- while you're trying to get all your auras set up, is probably gonna be a thing. Although... You know, I, I, maybe it can be reasonably consistent. It is mana intense early in the game, though. Uh, I would have, I would add a Mask of Memory also, just because I mean it's too good not to. That's super easy card draw with a flying commander that costs three. Uh, overall, though, it was really fun once we got everything going. That was some like really crazy stuff we did in the last like two, three turns. It was just very slow to get there, and without like. Without the appropriate removal and interaction to kind of slow people down before that, uh, I, I am concerned about the deck. Uh, I do wonder if it's possible to have faster starts. Our start was a little awkward. We didn't have, like, a lot going on. We kept on the strength on Sarah Sanctum, which uh, did make us a ton of mana all game, honestly. But I do wonder if, like, a more a hand with more action early on would have been good. Although, there was that early board wipe that D-Manny played that, uh, you know, maybe that crushes early value. I don't know. But... It was a fun little build. Uh, I would say it's probably not going to be the most powerful thing at the table, but it is certainly unique, and it is very interesting. Uh, so, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching. I want to thank my awesome Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. If you want to help support the channel and vote on which decks I play next, feel free to check out my Patreon at the link below.